Mary Black. Thank you. Oh. I've not even said anything. Oh, thank you very, very much. Thank you. That's a very warm reception. And after listening to my introduction there, no pressure. Uh, <laughs> so just to begin, good afternoon conference. Pleasure to be here. Dilch an Vaura Amo Croiso. I can only apologise if I've butchered that for you, but uh, it, it's good to be back in Wales. It's, it's been a few years since I've uh, been here, but thank you for the warm reception that you've given me. Uh, and I want to start by telling you just what a great honour it is to be here with you all today. And I'd also like to thank Plaid's uh, first female MP, Liz Savile Roberts, for addressing our conference back in October and for giving me this opportunity to return the favour. And I hope that it was clear from the reception that she received just how much respect and solidarity we in the SNP have with you all in Plaid Cymru. One of the few things that soothes my sanity in Westminster is undoubtedly having the friendly faces of Liz, Ben and Howell sitting behind me. We even share a table at lunch. It's like mean girls. I should also say, that I look forward with hope to welcoming Reen to those green benches alongside us. <laughs> now, before I really get into things, I, I want to give you a, a flavour of what life is like in Westminster. Uh, and I don't know if, if you've seen this, but when you watch the chamber, there are people standing up the back called doorkeepers and they have the white bow ties and the long tail coats, and they actually have a piece of gold that hangs from their waistcoat, and that was gold that was gifted by Queen Victoria. So, it, it, you know, it's a very established uh, thing. Now, when I first arrived down in Westminster, I, uh, I, I was talking to one of the doorkeepers, and, and I says to them, you know, where do you get your uniform? Like, you can't exactly just walk into you know, Matalan and, and buy that gear. And he said, it's, it's actually very interesting. There is a, a, a royal uh, contract uh, and it's only one specific tailor that is able to make these uniforms. I thought, oh, that's very good. Uh, does that include the tights? <laughs> Do... And he leaned into me and he said, no, nah, boots to for a tenor. <laughs> so it is a very, very bizarre and mad world, but I'm sure I'll touch on that later. <laughs> now, I, I've made no secret of the fact that my family, like so many others across the UK, was predominantly Labour growing up. And as the Blair years rumbled on, I remember more and more people feeling alienated by and from the Labour Party. And this lurch to the right that they took, it, it might have been required to win over votes in England, but people quite rightly began asking themselves, why is it the rest of us should just have to endure it? Why should we have to settle for just slightly less than the Tories? Now, folk back home began asking themselves, why is it that Scotland hasn't voted Conservative since 1955 and has yet had to endure consecutive Tory governments for the majority of the years since then? Now, my journey into politics began in 2012 when it was an SNP Scottish government announced that we would have a referendum on Scottish independence. And at the time, I remember my dad telling me that if there's one time to get involved in politics, then this is it. This is how we're going to change things. And my dad and I spent near enough two years, if not more, standing on high streets, traveling throughout Scotland, handing out leaflets, knocking on doors, basically knocking our pans in until we had convinced as many people as we possibly could to take that leap towards independence. And I mention this because it was during that campaign when I was 16 or 17 that I first became aware of Plaid Cymru. And it wasn't just because my interest in politics had deepened, it was because members from Plaid Cymru were right beside me 
standing shoulder to shoulder, knocking doors and helping us campaign for our independence. So many of you spent your hard-earned cash traveling up to Scotland to help us fight for that better nation. You showed us real friendship and support and you gave us a boost when we needed it most. Your enthusiasm, your generosity and your solidarity has not and will not ever be forgotten. Now, I know that I don't need to explain the long history uh, of friendship and support between uh, Plaid Cymru and the SNP, but I hope that you will take me at my word when I tell you that it is honestly a privilege to be standing with you all here today and an honour to be invited along uh, to speak with you. Again, I'm going to apologise if I butcher the language, but this is my first time in Tlenelli. Ish. <laughs> now, so before I arrived, um, I, I did what any good millennial would do. I googled it. <laughs> and it turns out it was actually two breweries here that were the first in the UK to produce beer in a can. So my final thanks to you is for that wonderful <laughs> innovation. It really has made my life better. But I also came across uh, the wonderful story of Eileen and Trevor Beasley. Now, I, I know that I don't have to uh, tell all you about the two of them, um, but indulge me for a moment, because given the Beasleys were former Plaid Cymru members and they have credit for kick-starting the, the Welsh language movement, which I have to say puts us in Scotland to shame, I think uh, they've made such a difference uh, to this place. But the thing that I really loved uh, about that story was I read in the 1950s that the Beasleys had requested a Welsh version of their council tax bill and their request was refused and so they rightly campaigned to get that changed. And they did this by refusing to pay their taxes until their demand was met. Now the local council reacted as you would expect and they ended up sending in the bailiffs and forcefully took all their furniture and sold it. But in true community fashion, that furniture was bought by the Beasley's next door neighbors who immediately returned it back to them free of charge. Now I like to think somewhere in that is symbolic of the relationship between Plaid and the SNP and one day what the relationship between an independent Wales and an independent Scotland can be. We share undoubtedly a deep connection with Wales through our languages, our culture, our shared historical experiences, the managed decline, uh, the managed decline of our industrial heartlands, which has taught us so much about the need for hard work, equality and community. And even to this day, we still share similar issues and challenges. We've got a corrupt and chaotic Tory party determined to dismantle public services and line their own pockets in the process. We've got a Labour Party scared of its own shadow, trying to out-Tory the Tories. And both are obsessed with this stubborn commitment to a self-destructive Brexit, to a cruel immigration system, and to hoarding power in Westminster rather than giving it back to communities. And worst of all, we face a Westminster establishment intent on riding roughshod over devolution and democracy. And what we've seen in the last few years is honestly terrifying. We are both living proof that this is not a union of equals by any means. And with the Tories and a pro-Brexit Labour Party now essentially one and the same, it's clear that real change for our communities and for the people living in our country Real change is not going to come from Westminster. And we are fools if we continue waiting. Only independence and the full powers that come with it can bring about a better future. It's why every other country in the world has strived for it and has achieved it. It's both Plaid and the SNP, certainly in my experience, that have stood together opposing the Tories. Tory attacks on the most vulnerable in our society the dismantling of our trade unions, and standing against the erosion of our human rights. At every turn, Plaid have been right beside the SNP and standing against that. And from my personal experience, I want to assure you all today 
that with your MPs, you have first class representatives standing up for you. First class, uh, I would do. <laughs> Round of applause is much needed. Now, in listening to them, it's undeniable the connections that we share, whether it's the shared values or common sense arguments. We stand side by side. And it, the reason I'm saying this is because it's not that long ago that the SNP only held 25 seats out of 129 in the Scottish Parliament. We only had six MPs at Westminster. Labour were in government at Holyrood and in government at Westminster. And they controlled most of the local authorities across Scotland. Support for independence not that long ago was sitting stagnant at about 20%. Uh, the most optimistic was close to 30 and we had never been in government before or led a country, but that didn't stop us from dreaming big. We hammered home the message that things didn't need to be like this, that we should expect better from our politicians and demand better for our country. Now, we didn't just focus on what the Tories and what Labour were doing wrong, but we actually began to develop our own ideas to put forward how we would do things differently the different sort of policies that we would implement, the different direction we wanted to take our country in. Now, we didn't, uh, well, sure enough, actually, vote by vote, door by door, we began to raise the confidence of people in Scotland. And we earned their trust, slowly but surely. And by being in government, we were actually able to show just how differently things can be done. It's because of SNP being in power in the Scottish Parliament that we have free prescriptions, that we have free travel for the elderly, for the under 25s. We have an end to tuition fees. We have a focus on early years support and nurturing our young people instead of making life difficult for them or leaving them in a situation where if they want to thrive, they have to leave the country. They have to travel across to different countries, whether that be in London or whether it be across the world. Now, it doesn't have to be a distant dream because things in Scotland are by no means perfect. But where we don't have the ability to rid ourselves completely of conservative governments that we don't vote for, what we did have the ability to do was shield ourselves to some extent, shield ourselves from some of the worst policies. For example, no one in Scotland has endured the bedroom tax. We made sure that nobody would lose their house due to that. That didn't happen anywhere else. That didn't happen in England, but we were able to do that. So if the SNP have managed to achieve these things in Scotland, then there is no reason why Plaid Cymru can't achieve the same here in Wales. With work, with ambition, and with determination, you too can inspire people to dream big, inspire people in Wales to demand something better to realise that they actually deserve better more than anything. Just as the SNP has always put Scotland first and will always make our voices heard in Westminster, some louder than others, <laughs> the same is true for Plaid Cymru. And I have no doubt and no shame in saying this, that Plaid Cymru are the only party that have Wales at the heart of everything that they do. Now, if there is one lesson to be learned from your friends in Scotland, it's this. If Labour and the Tories aren't different enough for your liking, if they're not meeting your aspirations for your home, if they're continuing to allow inequality to widen, if they are hell-bent on having a brutal immigration system, if they are failing to protect the most vulnerable in your society, if they're failing to provide opportunity for your young people, if they're failing to protect the NHS from Tory privatisation, if they're dismantling our social security system in every way they can, if they're failing to defend the democratic right of our parliaments, then no matter where you come from, if Wales is your home, then be of no doubt that Plaid Cymru has you at their heart.
Now, conference, it's you guys that can make that future happen. It's you guys that can make it possible. And I've made no secret that the UK is heading down a deteriorating and dangerous path. And it doesn't show any sign of slowing, unfortunately. We, as the UK, act like an arrogant world power, looking down on the rest of the world, when the truth is we have been destroying what international goodwill we have left. Our economy is one of the poorest performing. Our pensions are the lowest in Europe. Our sick pay is atrocious. Our, we, we can't even ensure that our citizens are given a real living wage that they can actually survive off of. No, no, instead of that, we'll, we'll just change the name and hope that no one notices. We are energy rich, and yet millions sit in the cold having to choose between heating themselves or heating their dinner. And right now we've got this UK government that are quite content with that situation, quite content with rising energy bills, despite having the funds that could cut the bills sitting right there. They have the pot of money. This idea that we're so skint we can't afford to make life better for people is nonsense. It's a political choice. And the Tories are the ones that are making it. And Labour are the ones that are propping them up as they do so. So let me tell you this, that it's with hope and with confidence and with one eye always on the future, you are going to be the change that Wales needs. You are the party that is going to write the next chapter in Wales's history. You are where we once were. And you've seen the trajectory that the SNP's been on. There is no reason that you can't do the same. Now, I, I, I won't lie to you, it will be hard. It will be an uphill struggle. You will face undoubted challenges. You will face numerous challenges. But I assure you this, it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. If you can give people the confidence that they need to believe in themselves, to believe in their country, that's the greatest gift you can give folk because that's how they're going to ensure that they get governments they vote for, policies they vote for. And the best part is, if your government doesn't deliver, you can vote them out. Best selling point. <laughs> and let me finish with this. I, I had uh, I'd mentioned previously uh, the, the doorkeepers. And uh, just to give you an insight into the, what work they do, they, uh, I mean, they look after us all. They are all highly trained. You know, they used to be in the police, used to be in the army. They keep things ticking in Westminster. You know, they're essentially really well-dressed janitors. <laughs> and they make such a difference. But let me leave you with this parting thought, that when you're on this journey and when you're on this struggle, and you find yourself tired, and you find yourself fighting against the Westminster establishment, and it is powerful. When that establishment flings everything at you, including the kitchen sink, when you are feeling at your lowest, when you're thinking this is an impossible task and that you aren't good enough, I need you to remember that they also get their tights for boots, just like me and you, <laughs> okay? You're every bit as good as them. So get out there, win hearts and minds, and win Welsh independence. Thank you again for having me. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.